Hello, this is Matthew Randall with another uh, procedural rendering recipe for Arnold. Um, so what I want to have a look at today is the color jitter node uh, and how we can actually use that to actually randomize the color of our objects. So I've kind of got a bit of an abstract scene here of, of uh, a sort of line of vases. And what we're going to do is randomize uh, the color of these vases. Um, and now at the moment, I've got kind of like a metallic, um, I've got a procedural shader set up with like a, that's creating like a metallic texture on there. If you want more information on, on how to create that, uh, that's in a, another um, a procedural uh, rendering recipe of mine. So please have a look at that. Okay, um, but these can be applied to um, a, 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 any any setup um, uh, that's, uh, uh, and and applied to any uh, color attribute uh, within a shader. Okay, um, and uh, this is all set up using the AI standard surface shader. So this is this is just a, a, an AI standard surface shader that we're going to use. Okay, so effectively what I want to do is take this uh, the, the 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 color of the vase is being specified by this property here. Um, so I want to take uh, this property here and actually um, uh, uh, drive it, give it independent values for each object. Now this is a rather abstract example, but you can imagine an example where I've got um, lots of balls, or I've got some, uh, I've got lots of sticks on the ground or something, and I just want those sticks to kind of look like different colours. I might have lots of objects together, and, I, and to make that scene look a bit more natural, I just want to kind of randomise slightly what those colours are, okay? Um, uh, to make things look a bit more natural. So you can imagine there's a lot of kind of applications, useful applications for this. Okay, so I'm going to get right into it. I'm just going to go, uh, I'm going to hit tab, and I'm going to go uh, bring up the colour jitter node. OK. And all I want to do is, uh, again, if I look in here, you can see it's the coat color that I want to drive here. Um, hopefully you can kind of see that. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Here we go. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just connect the uh, out color here to my coat color. Right. But obviously I could connect this to any of the uh, color attributes uh, that I'm using. But in this case, it's it's the coat color that I'm interested in. Okay, so you can see that my vases are all turned white. Okay, um, uh, just uh, also I've obviously switched my renderer here to Arnold, uh, just so you know that. Okay, uh, so you can kind of preview what we're doing as we're doing it. Okay, so I'm going to click on this jitter node. Uh, and what we're going to do is we need to specify like a base input color, okay? Uh, you can go from white. Um, I'm going to go and specify this teal color, okay? Because um, I, I don't want to be completely random. Does that make sense? Um, um, I don't want to be completely random. Um, I want to control that randomness, okay? So we could use white. Um, but I'm going to go from this teal color. Now, the uh, type we want to set to object. So that what we're doing is we're setting a uh, separate color for each object. You can set this to face. So you're actually setting a separate color for every face. Uh, but I don't want to do that at this point. Okay, so I'm going to click on here. Okay, um, so now what we can do is we can start um, setting... Uh, the ranges for our randomness. So at the moment, there is no kind of, if you look at the minimum, maximum for each. So we can actually, sorry, I'm going to start again. We can randomize the gain, the hue, the saturation. And if we look at the minimum and maximum value for each of these um, uh, uh, properties that we can randomize, uh, you will see that um, uh, that, 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 that they're all set to zero. So at the moment, there's basically no randomization happening. Okay, so let's say I want to randomize the hue a little bit. So I can just go and put in, say, minus 0.5. Okay, and instantly, you can see we're randomizing, and I can put this, the maximum, sorry, I'll put to 0.5. Okay, and you can see we're randomizing the hue uh, that we can use uh, uh, to generate these objects. So now we're getting them in different uh, different colors, but they're all going to be the same tone. So it'll be different colors, but it'll be the same tone. I think I've probably set this, this a little bit high. Sorry, we should be operating between values. Obviously, your maximum theoretical output color should be something like one. Um, um, so, yeah, and remember, um, sorry, what you should understand is that this these values are relative to the input value, okay? So this Q is being manipulated relative 
to this input value. So obviously a minus will be subtracting from the input value. Uh, a plus will be adding to the input value. Uh, we can also put a seed in here. Uh, randomize the seed. I'm just going to try and uh, just put, I think you just put in uh, uh, a, a, an integer or a whole number in there. And it basically it will just force it to, if you don't like the colors it's come up with, you can just put another number in there and it should generate a, a, a new set of number, uh, a new set of colors for you. Okay. Um, okay. So rather than manipulating the hue uh, in a sort of extreme way, let's try and do a kind of more natural nuanced example. So I'm going to set the hue back to zero. And look at kind of manipulating the gain. So uh, we've already got quite a lot of gain on this. So what I might do is kind of look at uh, uh, reducing the gain. Uh, so again, 0.5. Okay. So you can see that I've kind of got a sort of subtle effect here uh, of different color, different tones of this same color blue here. And again, the saturation, I might kind of randomize the saturation as well. I'll go sort of minus 0.5. There we go. So this kind of give it again. This is a kind of more controlled, more natural example of uh, controlling uh, the randomization of the color. So yeah, that's my demonstration of the jitter node and how we can use that to randomize uh, um, a color attribute for each object. Um, hope you enjoyed it.